Struggling with depression is hell. I don't like it when people say, hey, just get out there and exercise, you'll get better, because that's bullshit. What does work for me though is simply getting out of bed, walking, taking that step, getting some endorphins going. It helps me, you're not alone. Have a good day. Today on Sober Mind, episode five, I'm gonna talk to my friend about the drunkest I've ever been and how dangerous it was. Well, the drunkest I can remember at least. Tune in live every Saturday. Depression tends to annihilate my motivation factor, so I've tried to implement the five minute philosophy. I simply start a task and give it five minutes. If I can't make it past five minutes, then at least I tried. You'd be surprised what happens when the momentum gets going. I drank so much beer one night that the next morning I had a panic attack so bad that my face went numb. Join me tonight on Tuesday Night Decaf, Sober Mind Rewind, as we discuss. Us combat arms veterans are literally trained to kill human beings. When our service is done, they let us out without any mental rehabilitation. It's not a light switch, it can't just be turned off. Check in with your veteran today, see if they're okay. In 1984, on Easter Eve, my mother slit her wrist in front of me in the kitchen. While she was bleeding all over the kitchen floor, she proceeded to yell at me over and over again how much she wished I was never born. What happened next is quite a story. Join me on Sober Mind. Quitting drinking alcohol wasn't easy for me, but it was the simplest solution to the majority of all of my problems. I finally realized the insanity of my alcoholism when for about the hundredth time I woke up in my pillow gently sobbing and telling myself that I had to quit this madness only to be followed by drinking a beer in the shower. The best part of a long business trip is the last day in the hotel and going home. Going home. I'll be home. With all of the abuse that I suffered as a child, the verbal abuse still sits with me at age 50. Listen y'all, it doesn't take a lot. Nurture your children, give them some encouragement. They'll have a good shot at being successful. Love them. Partly due to the abuse that I suffered as a child, I have a tendency to react to situations with old emotion. Ever since I realized that, I've been working with myself to cultivate new emotional responses to situations. It takes practice, you gotta be kind to yourself. When I was a child, my mother used to tell me she hated me and wished that I was never born on multiple occasions. As I continue to work on my mental health development, the self-esteem bruising is something that's really tough to dissect. Even though I endured several years of various forms of abuse as a child and a teen, at 50 years old, I turned out okay. Imagine what your children can accomplish if you love and nurture them. If you've been talking to yourself in a cruel and hurtful way, finding new ways to use self-talk could help you build strength, emotional safety, and self-confidence. Be kind to yourself. I have anxiety, ADHD, and depression. It's very loud in this clown show, so it amazes me when people say, John, calm down, relax, don't worry about it. Believe me, I wish I could. The only thing that made it quiet was alcohol, so... My name is John, I'm an alcoholic, I have a confession. I have a daughter who's 29 years old, her name is Soraya, she lives in Southern California, I think. I've never had a relationship with her, I wanna to talk to her desperately, I can't find her. As a former infantry soldier, I've been through a lot. What really caught me off guard when I got sober was the panic attacks that I'd have. It was difficult for me to go to a grocery store without it feel like it was caving in on me. Psychiatry and therapy helped me out a lot. We had to put our little dog down yesterday. She was old and sick. We had her for 13 years. Man, she helped my mental health so much. I wanna cry really bad, but I just can't. It's frustrating when I tell people that I'm depressed when they ask how I'm doing. Because they say, why, John, you've got a perfect life. And I say, yeah, but there's a little broken part of my brain that's misfiring and tells me that I wanna curl up into a little ball and die. I woke up this morning and I'm still sober. 18 months ago was my last drink. What I value most right now while I'm rediscovering myself is how important I am to my family, how much I matter. Have a good day. Sobriety is a very personal journey. What surprised me the most was how many of my problems just seem to vanish. More importantly, remember, if you stumble, keep trying. Keep trying, you'll get there. My mother was psychologically and physically abusive to us. When she died, I didn't mourn her. I didn't care that she was gone. The only thing I regret is not being able to ask her, why? 
Why did you not love your babies? When I was 12, my stepfather locked me in my bedroom for two and a half months during summer break. Found out years later that during that time he had been raping my 10 year old sister. Found out before my mother died that she knew all along. How can I forgive? There's been a lot of comments about forgiveness and letting go and finding Jesus and God. I prayed to your God during all of the beatings. My sister prayed to your God for four more years while your God watched her get raped. She was 10. I yelled, Look out, kids. I've got pink eye. <laughs> Slushy hits like right down at the bottom. Uh, in the park but you know when you do sober up you you lose a, a lot of a lot of good friends too because they were that environment they were your drinking buddies or whatever you, you tend to lose you know a good portion of of your environment but then you turn around and, and she picked up a butcher knife in the kitchen and in rapid succession slit both of her wrists just like zing, zing, and there was blood just starting to drip all up. When I was 11, my mother spit in my face and told me that she wished I was never born and then locked me in my room for two days. I think that was the moment my self-esteem permanently got bruised. I would gently sob in my pillow and tell myself, I've got, I've got to quit. I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I have no idea how many times I did that. When I was 19, I was really pining for my father's affection. At which point he told me that he didn't think that he was my father. Between that and my mother's abuse, sometimes I wonder if I'm doing enough to make sure that I'm healing myself. The psychological and physical abuse was horrific. It really was. My mom would beat the bejesus out of me. I've received a ton of feedback from the YouTube community, so thank you. A lot of recommendations about how I can forgive and forget my mother's abuse. I've come to a conclusion. I can't. I can't do it. Her wickedness drives me to be a good man. Sobriety isn't about not having a drink. Sobriety is about creating the life that we want to live. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to understand. One of the coolest things that I found during my sobriety was one day I woke up on the foot of my bed and realized I was shedding old emotions. I was shedding toxic friendships. I was reinventing myself and finally becoming the man I want to I respond that way. Like it doesn't matter if I'm at work or if I'm here. And if, you know, like I have a situation, I, it takes a lot of work to not have all the voices going on in the head. I'm still looking for my daughter. Her name is Soraya. She goes by Raya Rose and other aliases. She's 29. She lives in the Los Angeles area. She's involved in an organized prostitution ring and addicted to fentanyl, so I fear she won't be here for long. I'm on Discord on my about page. And then eventually, like, I, I just, like, threw the tears. I was like, Dad, I like girls. And he was like, me too. <laughs> Which was <laughs> the best response from anyone. I woke up depressed. I got nothing to be depressed about. I have the perfect life. So this is Medication Management 101. It's been two weeks since I did a medication change and I continue to get depressed. I'm calling my psychiatrist today. Week three, I'm still depressed. I'm doing everything right too. This is the 18 month roller coaster medication management I've been on. I got a meeting with my psychiatrist coming up this Thursday, but I tell you what, I'm just grasping for a glimpse of happiness sometimes. This oh, sucks. I'll be meeting with my psychiatrist at noon today. Some of you know with my podcast and our live stream that I really keep it real about my mental health struggles over the last 18 months. I gotta get to the bottom of this, especially with medication management. I slipped into a, a level of depression that I've never experienced uh, about a week ago. Yeah, I was in a really deep, dark place. Uh, the apex of it was Tuesday. I felt like lead. I didn't. I couldn't do anything. I didn't want to do anything. And nothing. Nothing. I had zero motivation. I laid on my bed and I thought, I want to sell all of my podcasting equipment. I want to sell our house. I want to move into a cave in the middle of nowhere and just cry. Shit's powerful. It's very powerful if you don't understand. I got nothing to complain about. All right, I'll keep you posted.
On Wednesday, I finally started to emerge from my two and a half week stint of depression that was caused by a bit of mania. I met with my psychiatrist yesterday and we had an honest discussion. I told her about a very brief moment of suicidal ideation that occurred. It was very brief. Listen, we don't have to be ashamed about this. We got to talk about it. We're going to do some medication adjustment. I got to go back to talk therapy. Uh, she thinks that a lot of this stuff is still PTSD induced. So I got to get it figured out. Don't be ashamed to talk about it. You got to talk. That, that deep sniff of that beautiful fresh cut grass and the nice breeze coming through sent me completely over the edge into the deepest, darkest area that I've been in my adult life. I cannot remember being that sad. During your mental health struggles, it always helps to have a partner to talk to. I've shared everything with Puka. She's carried the weight of the world for me with no judgment. Happy Monday, y'all. Remember, all the problems you have now, those problems will eventually pass. All the good things to come, they'll come. Let's take this week and kick it in the nuts. Remember, if you're going through hell, keep going. Huh, pook. I had a real rough day yesterday, but one thing that keeps me grounded is realizing that I have the love of my family and my dog, non-judgmental non pooka. Have a good week, y'all. I'm going through a super dramatic life event right now. It's easier said than done, but I gotta just keep reminding myself that I can't control this. The chips will fall where they may, and life will go on. Keep on pushing, y'all. Happy Friday. Because I'm sober. But it's like I've told you before, I get the... Something happens, and I'm automatically off into the worst doom and gloom there is. You know, you've seen me react to this. I use the example... I'm still going through a super dramatic life event. But I realized that if I wasn't sober, if I was still drinking, I'd probably be on day seven of a wicked bender and it'd be doing zero good. So hang in there, y'all. Trying to architect your next controlled chaos. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's that was my drinking, you know. 20 months sober today. After 20 years of super hard drinking, I never thought I'd be in this position. I gotta tell you, being on the sober side of life is a way better place to be. Have a good weekend, y'all. You've got, you've been sober for so long and you're, you lack the tools like a lot of us do on how to process that emotion. We all deserve to be super happy and sobriety mm -hmm. is definitely that key, but. A lot of folks have left comments lately on my videos about their success with sobriety, but how miserable they still seem to be. I understand. Remember, you got to get out there and get some therapy. Talk to someone. You deserve to be happy. I would think, I don't know if our marriage is going to be uh, I don't think you did mention that, no. Yeah, I started to feel, and it wasn't you, it was me. I just, I didn't have the emotional capacity. And she goes, John, believe it or not, no one really gives a shit about you in public. He's like, hey, you're not the center of the universe like you think you are. <laughs> Day four of cold turkey quitting 150 milligrams of effects or pure hell. But I'm starting to get emotion back, which is amazing. Bye. Day five. Effexor cold turkey, 150 milligrams. Man, I woke up, the brain zaps weren't there. They came on a little bit slower today, which is great. Thank you everyone for leaving the comments yesterday. It really helped. Thank you. Oh my God. We're gonna give an update, Patrick. You ready? I'm strapped in. <laughs> I've been ready. Christ almighty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> God. Okay. What happens? If I jump in and take the risks, 
starting over at age 50 to do what I want, not what I have to do. That I've been an anxious individual all of my life, but I think it was, that was the trigger. That was sort of the linchpin of, of what happened because I was never, I was never fully correct after that. Fear keeps us safe. Fear keeps us comfortable. Fear can also cripple us. It can hold us back. Fear can stop us from taking risks. 